Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the channel This Name Madness. From today's class onwards, we will be studying topic 5 which is Pakistan to Bangladesh period of paper 1 CAIE Bangladesh. Study. Like topic 4, I am going to share the guidelines, the number of days, the titles that the topic contains so that it becomes easier for you to take a preparation on the topic. Now let's see what the topic contains. So we have three different chapters with 5A problem facing the new nation of Pakistan, 5 B problems of national integration between East and West Pakistan and 5C political mobilization and events leading to independence. So this is a mini summary of topic 5B, which is problem facing the new nation of Pakistan or problems that Pakistan face in compared to India. Now, this chapter will be containing a couple of problems that Pakistan faced just after the independence from British in 1947. And uh, you can also say that a problem that Pakistan faced more compared to India. Even India also faced a number of problems, but the problems that Pakistan faced were much more compared to India. So as a result, the questions might come by using the new nation of Pakistan or in compared to India. So be careful with this part because this part is quite similar to 5B as well. So in that case, students most of the time they get confused of to write which particular answer under this part. So please, uh, the technique is the question will be containing either new nation of Pakistan or sometimes by using comparison with India. So if you see the new nation or India, in that case, you have to understand that the question is coming from topic 5A. Now, before going into the other part of topic 5A, as you can see, I have drawn a rough map. So this is a rough map, the exact locations, this might not be the uh, same or correct. So please ignore those part because my task is just to give you the idea how the Indian subcontinent looked like during the British period then after the partition what happened so that's what I wanted to show over here please ignore the map drawing or if any location has been mistakenly misplaced anywhere please ignore that part too okay so this is a map of indian subcontinent this entire is an indian subcontinent which you can see now during the british period we had three bases during the british period this entire indian subcontinent was divided into three bases three bases like the way or it could also be called as precedences so during the british period the indian subcontinent was divided into three bases or into three subcontinent or sorry into three uh, precedences the bengal bombay and madras like bangladesh is now we are having around eight divisions in the country so during the british period we had three divisions bengal bombay and madras but we did not call them as uh, divisions we used to call them as bases or precedences bengal bombay and madras so this portion as you can see on the board this portion this portion is bengal this portion is bombay and this portion is madras i'm repeating again my this drawing may not be exactly correct so please ignore that part i'm just trying to give you a summary of how the basis could have been so this part is bengal this part is bombay and this part is madras now the eight divisions that present Bangladesh has, so it contains a headquarter. Like Chida for Chittagong Division, we have Chittagong as the headquarter. For Dhaka Division, we have Dhaka as the headquarter. For Silat Division, Silat the headquarter. Rangpur Division, Rangpur the headquarter. Rajshahi Division, Rajshahi the headquarter. For Khulna Division, Khulna. For Barishal Division, Barishal. For Maiman Singh Division, Maiman Singh. So these are the headquarters that we have as part according to the division. So these three bases also had their headquarter. For Bengal, the headquarter was Calcutta. For Bengal, the headquarter was Calcutta, that was the port city. For Madras, the headquarter was Madras, another port city. For Bombay, the headquarter was Bombay, another port city. So these are the three bases, precedences that we had during the British period, along with the headquarter, Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. Now, after the partition, what happened? So now we'll look what happened after the partition. So,
so this is what exactly happened after the partition and what is it all about you can see now we have three parts what are those three part this is one part this portion is one part this portion the blank portion is another part and this small portion is another part so we have three parts over here and in this three part we have two separate country one country is pakistan which was divided into two part east and west present bangladesh east pakistan present pakistan west pakistan and the blank portion which we have that's india So this is exactly what looks after the partition after British left us in 1947. The Indian subcontinent was divided into through two countries, West, I um, mean Pakistan, East and West Pakistan, and India as a whole. Okay. Now look into this three bases that were established by the British: Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta. So, after the partition, these three bases came under the control of India. Did Pakistan receive any one of these bases? No. So, it was India who received the bases. Now, whenever, I mean, the headquarters of the bases. So, whenever the headquarters are there, headquarters always contain the bestest facilities. It could be your uh, universities, it could be medical facilities, it could be government officials, it buildings, it could be residential buildings. So all the best facilities you will be getting in the headquarters, like the capital city. So these three headquarters, which were established by the British, are now inherited by India, not Pakistan. So as a result, India will be receiving some uh, important facilities compared to Pakistan, which Pakistan will not be due to not having this three headquarters. So as a result, Pakistan will be facing some problems compared to India or new nation of Pakistan will be facing some problem compared to India. That's one of the reasons for not having the headquarters in Pakistan. So this is a, just a small part of topic 5a where you can see that due to the separateness of the partition, I mean separateness of the Indian subcontinent into two part, the bases, the headquarters of the bases are now under the control of India, which means the important important zones are, will be under the control of India, not under the part of Pakistan. The other problem, the major problem that Pakistan phase in compared to India was ruling the two wings as one single country. If I look into India, India has one single border, right? So this is the one single border which I can see for India. One single border. <coughs> so there is no a uh, part of India that's been separated with another country. But if I talk about Pakistan, East and West Pakistan were separated from one another with a difference of 1,000 Indian, 1,000 miles of Indian land. So in between the two wings of Pakistan, we had another country, India. And we are talking about the period of 1947 where we did not have access to internet. There were no access to internet, electricity supply was not fair enough, the roads and communication systems were not fair enough and if you have to go from east to west or west to east Pakistan, you have to undergo uh, use the path of India or go through the sea journey. So as a result, what happens, it was quite difficult for the government of Pakistan to rule East and West Pakistan as one single country. And due to the separateness of these two countries, the geographical separateness of these two states of Pakistan, we have different cultures, we have different language, we have different uh, costumes, we I mean outfits, we have different outlooks. So as a result, it was quite difficult for the government to rule this particular two separate states as one single country. Now let us see what are the problems that has been mentioned in the book 
for this topic 5a so here we can see we have total eight problems which are mentioned in the book for topic 5a starting from geographical problem refuges and intercommunal violence political problem economic problem divisions of assets uh, and under this part we have finance and military then canal water dispute number seven social problem and number eight the kashmir issue but out of this eight problems which are mentioned in the pallet book out of this eight problems you only have to study four according to the syllabus the syllabus only contains four problems and that's refugees and intercommunal violence economic problem divisions of assets and social problem so these are the four problems that you have to study under topic 5a as per your syllabus so Please. we have two days challenge for this topic 5a uh, we have to study only four titles as i said under the uh, topic 5a according to our syllabus refugees and intercommunal violence economic problem divisions of assets financial military and social problem so i have divided this four titles or four problems into two part under two child two days challenge so on day one we'll be studying refugees and intercommunal violence economic problem and social problem on day two we will be studying divisions of assets including financials and military assets so this is how you have to study topic 5a and if you go through the pilot book you will find them finally written over here the differences the problems that pakistan faced under these all four problems so that only be a problem for you to identify what are the key points that you have to study because you are now quite intelligent enough or smart enough to know the differences between the important and non-important sentences so if you go through the book you will find them well, the key answer for this four different points and if you follow this challenge in that case it will be easier for you to complete this topic 5 way within two days so here comes our refugees and intercommunal violence day one challenge the first part of day one challenge refugees and intercommunal violence so under which we have to study all this bullet point but please go through the book as well and if you go and if you uh, can get some gather more information from the google you're most welcome so this is what i have collected from the book nothing i haven't included anything from my own or from the google but if you want you can also go through that so here is what we have under refugees and intercommunal violence i have just summarized the key important points but please go through the book i'm repeating that again and again don't just rely on this answer anyway so refugees basically means when we are people when the people are forced to take shelter into a different state or different country in the world just because of not being able to stay in their country so that's what refugees basically means then we have this intercommunal violence when we are having uh fightings amongst ourselves like for example example these indians and pakistans whom we are talking today are bangladeshis this india bangladesh and pakistan once upon a time they were actually under one single country which was indian subcontinent the british they have manipulated us and they have manipulated us through our religious uh, sentiment and as a result of that what happened we all started to fight amongst ourselves the people who were friends uh, once upon a time now they slowly and slowly they gradually became enemies just because of the religion that the british has played on us so now that means what after a certain time period we started fighting our own brothers we started uh you know uh betraying our own brothers and we we, uh, we tried our best to take off uh, to throw them out of the either india or pakistan based on the religion and have occupied their land so this is what internal communal violence basically means so internal communal violence due to this one the refugees took place so now let's see what could be the other two name of this refugees and intercommunal violence so according to the past paper uh, you can also be asked to write about the people's movement which took place in 1947 and this summer ride of 1947 this title is also mentioned in the book so these are the other two names of refugees and intercommunal violence so uh, don't just think that the ci will be giving you the direct questions write about the refugees and intercommunal violence no they might also ask you to write about a people's movement or summer right of 1947 or any other term which is related to this refugees and intercommunal violence now let's uh, now we will see how the refugees and intercommunal violence are began or people's movement began so the government of india and pakistan they clearly declared they clearly declared the government basically they have made the declaration that Pakistan is a state of Muslim and India is a state of non-Muslim. 
population. So this is what happened. When the government declares that Pakistan is a state of Muslims, so the Muslim people who are living in India, they thought of coming to in Pakistan because they were Muslim and Pakistan is a state of Muslim, but India with a non-Muslim state. So the problem begins when the declaration are made by the government, Pakistan a state of Muslim and India a state of non-Muslim. So as a result, people's movement began. Muslim, they moved to Pakistan, either East Pakistan or West Pakistan and non-Muslim, they moved to India from Pakistan. Some moved willingly. For example, if I'm a non-Muslim and if I'm staying here in Pakistan and after the declaration that Pakistan is a state of Muslim and India to be the non-Muslim state, so in that case, being a non-Muslim staying in Pakistan, I willingly moved to pa India by thinking that I'm a non-Muslim. So why will I stay in, pa in Pakistan? I will be moving to uh, India, which is my original, my religious state. So that the happened with the people some moved willingly and they were able to carry as much possessions as much wealth as they could so these possessions could be uh, they could be their gold could be their silver could be some caches which they had some like food to carry on to eat or uh, to eat on the way so these are certain uh, possessions which they were able to carry as they were moving willingly but there are some folks or some public who did not want to move by leaving behind their ancestral land Okay, so for example, a Muslim who was living in India, he had his ancestral land over there. He did not want to leave his ancestral land, his childhood memories over there, the place where he was born and brought up. He did not want to leave all those behind by thinking himself as an Indian, though he was a Muslim, but he was forced to leave the country because of this declaration as the violence started the violence spread and as a result he couldn't stay over there so he had to leave the country and that was an empty hand so he was forced to leave the country out of the violence with an empty hand now according to some muslim historians this program this massacre program or the violence program was started by hindus and Sikhs. according to some muslim historians because they believe that the part which we have in present india today so in that present indian part majority were muslim wealthy landowners majority muslim landowners used to stay over there in the indian part and this hindu and she especially the neighbors hindu and she which they had they have arranged this program so that if they are forcing the people the muslim uh, well, the uh, personalities to leave the country in that case, what happens after they leave the country, their land, their possessions, everything will belong to this Hindus and Shi. So that according to some Muslim historians, they believe this massacre program or this violence program was started by Hindus and Shi or arranged by them. Now, as a result of this, what happens? Some people moved willingly, some people moved with an empty hand, but you have to move from one country to another, either from India to Pakistan or Pakistan to India so here are some countable numbers these are the countable numbers but we don't know actually what happened we have no idea the number that actually took place the death rate that took place the homeless people that took place we have no idea about the exact amount so these are just some uh, some identical figures which are mentioned in the book so based on that I have given this information a million died including men, women, and children due to a long journey. So it's not only because of long journey, it could be because of lack of food because they were moving from one country to another. Some of them were able to move with with their own transport very few people have their own transport at that time so majority were moving with train then majority then uh, many of them were actually traveling by their own of uh, their uh, by by walking so that's actually what happened so million died because of this long journey might be because of the journey or it could be because of not having proper food so it could be any other reason but this is the countable one which we have then 20 million people were made homeless because they were moving from india to pakistan pakistan to india even those who have moved willingly even they were moving by leaving behind their wealth in india or in pakistan and moving to a new nation so they became a refugee they became a completely homeless though they were carrying something with them but still they did not have a home so this is 20 million people countable 20 million people who were made homeless 2 million refugees were received by Karachi Karachi is said to be the capital of Pakistan 
in that period so on that particular period karachi was the capital so on as a result we all have the tendency to move to the capital city thinking that we might be able to get a proper facilities if we are moving to the capital so as karachi was the capital uh, of pakistan during that period so 2 million refugees were received by karachi now, what was the problem for Pakistan? But we are talking about the problems facing the new nation of Pakistan. Pakistan itself was a new country. We did not, Pakistan did not exist like before 900. So Pakistan was most probably or came into the account in 1903, 04 or 05. I don't remember the exact year. So this is when the Pakistan started to emerge and from Pakistan, from Pakistan, the name Pakistan actually arrived. So it itself was a new country. It wasn't wealthy. It did not have all the facilities that it was supposed to facilitate the new uh, refugees or the people itself because pakistan anyway had to deal with the colonial famine that took place over here in bengal in 1943 so bengal anyway was facing poverty and and that was a part of pakistan as well not only that plus the refugees were coming into pakistan so as a result what happened it was quite difficult for pakistan to facilitate the refugees as well as tackle their own previous problem the financial problem the rest of the problem which we have seen on the board a while ago so this was a problem for pakistan that it did not have all the facilities which were required for the general public so this is what we have about refugees and intercommunal violence the remaining information which i have been written on over here on this on the board so those are the one that you have to study from the book so that you can answer them for your one line Our next part of day one challenge is economic problem so under this economic problem you have to write this part if it's coming for your five more questions but remember always to go through the book please go through the book for your your details informations as well as for your online questions so this is a summary of economic problem now economic problem mostly consists of the entire economy entire pakistan as a whole which includes our primary secondary and tertiary sectors so pakistan was made up of states which were mostly underdeveloped with little industry so underdeveloped states with little industry will never help you to grow will never help a country to get as much wealth as as required for the development for the further investment so that was the first problem with pakistan because at the beginning of the class we have seen that the three bases the three headquarters or the three important bases bombay madras and calcutta came under the control of india not under the control of pakistan so as a result the pakistan was the both the states of pakistan east and west pakistan were underdeveloped with little industry so that did not help the pakistan to grow the economic fell down next was karachi which was a modern port karachi was a modern port with all the modern sophisticated uh, machines or equipments or facilities which were required which a modern port basically has so but had little connection with the industries of central india though it was a modern port but it failed in having a good connection or good relationship with the industries of the neighboring country india so it's very important that you are having a good connection relationship with your neighboring country because it's your neighboring country who's gonna help you or it's your neighbor who's gonna help you or at the very first sense when you're facing a problem okay so suppose we are in a danger or we are something happened inside our house in that case what happens is a neighbor who will come rush on you so by the time your your relatives who are coming from a distance place by the time they come might be your problem could have been solved by the neighbor so this is important to have a very good relationship with the neighbor so karachi was a modern port but it failed in having any good connections with the industries that took place in central india so again what happened uh, it did not help the economy of pakistan to grow then next was pakistan was not a wealthy country as i said pakistan was itself a new country a, a, a new country who did not have much wealth much resources which were required to facilitate the people so the major income source of pakistan was agriculture so this is very important to be noted that the major income source this income source of pakistan was agriculture and we all know that the people who are working in agriculture they are mostly illiterate uh, 
they are very poor extreme poor they don't have much cash they don't even have own land or own houses at the time then the 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 wages or the salaries that they are receiving the farmers the peasants who are receiving under the agricultural sector are very less very very less so as a result the income source of pakistan the major income source of pakistan was agriculture which did not produce enough for industries to make an industry or to establish industrialization you will be needing a huge amount of wealth which pakistan did not have then there were eight towns pakistan had eight towns but the majority population of pakistan lived in the countryside so pakistan though had eight towns they had eight particular towns but 90 percent of the people used to live in the countryside so that was a biggest disadvantage of pakistan and finally we can see that east bengal which means east pakistan or present bangladesh produced 70 percent 70 percent of world's crop 90 percent of jute which was a major foreign earnings by selling this world's crop and jute is pakistan used to produce a foreign earnings for the entire pakistan but what happened they did not have a single jute mill pakistan did not have any single jute mill neither east pakistan nor west pakistan as the headquarters went into the indian subcontinent uh, the mills were also in the headquarters or beside the headquarters or to or, or in the adjacent areas of the headquarters so as a result of that none of the headquarters came under the control of pakistan so pakistan used to produce raw 70 percent world crop and raw 70 and raw 90 percent jute without having any jute mill so if the pakistan did have a jute mill then it could have made the economic grow or develop further but as a result of not having anything so this is what the economic problem that pakistan had to go through in compared to india now if i say why is it in compared to india like india had already industries because the uh, all the headquarters were in India. So they had already industries. They had inherited the headquarters from the British period. So the industries were already established over there. Then India already had the Reserve Bank, the Federal Banks, the ports like Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, they were important ports. So India already had all the facilities. They basically inherited all these facilities from the British period, but Pakistan did not. And as a result, Pakistan economic well, and this is the economic problem that Pakistan had. Now to. we'll look into divisions of assets, which has two parts, financial and military. So first we'll look into financial, then military, which is our part of our day two challenge. So divisions of assets, financial assets. First of all, assets were to be divided between India and Pakistan. The assets as the British left and the part or the portion that they couldn't take along with them, they have decided they have asked the indian government to divide amongst us in the ratio of 17 is to 5 and how did this ratio took place this ratio took place based on size and population of the two countries so india would be receiving 17 and pa pakistan would be receiving five of the financial assets based on the size and population of the two country so british they left 4 billion rupees british left 4 billion rupees in the reserve bank as the headquarters were in india the reserve bank which was established by the british is now in india and in that reserve bank british left four billion rupees for both pakistan and india and the reserve bank was in india so it is now the duty of india to hand over the amount of pakistan to pakistan government so pakistan out of this four billion rupees which was in the reserve bank left by the british pakistan would be receiving 750 million rupees Pakistan would be receiving 750 million rupees out of this 4 billion rupees which was kept by the British in the Reserve Bank which was in India which is in India and on what basis ratio is 17 to India 5 to Pakistan based on size and population as the size and population of India and Pakistan differs a lot so based on that the ratio was done. Now, it's the duty of Pakistan to hand over the amount of 750 million rupees to Pakistan. So, India paid 200 million rupees. How much did India pay? India paid only 200 million rupees out of 750. It's just 200 
hundred out of seven fifty and refuse to pay the remaining they refuse to pay the remaining but why because of the kashmir war the kashmir the famous kashmir war was started between india and pakistan and according to india if india pays the full amount 750 to pakistan in that case pakistan would be using this 750 million rupees for the Kashmir war by buying the war materials. Pakistan would be using to buy the war materials so that they win the Kashmir war with India. So as a result, India only paid 200 million rupees and refused to pay the remaining 550 million rupees to Pakistan. Now, the most important part took place was when Gandhi went to a hunger strike. Gandhi, who was a member of Congress, an Indian leader, he went to a hunger strike because just to pay the amount back to Pakistan. According to Gandhi, he doesn't believe in any violence. So according to him, this 750 million rupees is the complete right of Pakistan and it's up to them how they will be using the money, either for the war materials or to uh, for the development of industries or for any other sector that completely depends on Pakistan and we cannot claim make any claim on that because this is the right of Pakistan so once Gandhi went to a hunger strike only then Indian government has decided to pay 50 sorry 500 million rupees so Indian government after Gandhi went on a hunger strike paid 500 million rupees to Pakistan but still 50 million rupees is unpaid 50 million rupees is still unpaid so this is what we have about the divisions of financial assets i'm repeating the assets was supposed to be divided between india and pakistan in the ratio of seven is to five based on the size and population of the country so the british they left four billion rupees in the reserve bank which was in india because of the headquarters the bombay calcutta and madras were in india so the reserve bank was also in india and from that reserve bank out of this 4 billion rupee pakistan was supposed to receive 750 million rupees but india paid only 200 million rupees to pakistan and as the kashmir war started so pakistan might use this amount for the war materials so india refused to pay the remaining 550 million rupees but gandhi he went to a hunger strike to so that the government pays the 550 million rupees to pakistan and as a result what happened 500 million rupees was paid to india was paid to pakistan by india but still 50 million rupees was unpaid so this is the financial assets the divisions of financial assets now uh, the problem that i want to discuss over here is that financial is all about money here we can say it's all about money most of the student uh, this is my 12th year career in teaching this subject, Bangladesh studies. So in this 12 year careers of teaching Bangladesh studies, I have seen that even after repeatedly uh, awareing the students that financial is only about money, but they have still written the answers of economic problem into financial assets. Economic problem, which we have done just a little while ago under, to, under the second part so that is only about industries modern port jute world crop and this is only about money so economic problem is completely different and financial asset is completely different so here we are talking about the division so please the key word to remember this part or the difference between economic and financial is financial is only about the division, divisions of financial assets. And in the division means we are talking about India and Pakistan directly, the divisions, the ratios, okay? But in economic problem, there is no division mentioned. They did not mention about any particular division. They are talking about the problem the economy faced, the country faced as a whole in case of the development. So this is what we have under the financial assets. Here comes the division of military assets. Same as financial assets, the military assets were also divided between India and Pakistan in the ratio of 44% is to 36%. So for this case, you have a unit that is percentage. So it's 44% and 36%, which makes up total 80%. So out of 100%, 80% were divided between India and Pakistan in the ratio 
value of 44 percent is to 36 percent and the remaining 20 percent the remaining 20 percent were marked as reserved under british officers so what happened with this 20 percent we're coming to that later so this is how the assets were divided the military assets were supposed to be divided between india and pakistan and under military assets we have three sectors the first sector is soldiers second sector is about the ordnance factory and the third sector is the war supplies or the war materials so these are the three sectors which we have under the military assets now uh, Though Pakistan was supposed to receive 36%, but the soldiers were given the option to choose their own state. The soldiers were given the option to choose whichever or whichever country they wanted to. So they can they could go for that particular country, India or Pakistan. So they were given the option to choose. So as a result, what happened? Pa Muslim went to Pakistan and non-Muslim, they went to India. So Muslim went to Pakistan and non-Muslim went to India. So basically, out of this 36 person uh, as the muslim has chosen pakistan and non-muslim india so for pakistan the ratio even went down so in, it wasn't exactly 36 person that pakistan got okay so this is the first thing that we are getting under the soldier the second part which we are getting under the soldier is that pakistan received 150,000 ordinary soldier so out of this 36 person and the muslim choosing pakistan so 150 ordinary soldier 150,000 ordinary soldiers came under pakistan with 2500 trained soldier so pakistan also received 2500 trained soldiers with 1000 1, uh, 1, ordinary soldier but at that time, Kashmir war was going on. The Kashmir war between India and Pakistan was going on and Pakistan required 4,000 trained officers. Pakistan required 4,000 trained officers for Kashmir war, but Pakistan received only 2500 so remaining 1500 were very essential for pakistan so as pakistan lacked trained officers so what did pakistan do pakistan hired 500 trained officer pakistan hired 500 trained officer from 20 person reserved from 20 person reserved they have hired 500 trained officer and they all were hindus the, the officers that they have hired from this 20 person they all were hindu so this is a problem that pakistan had to face but they had no other options but because they needed the trained officers though it though they were hindus or uh, it didn't matter to them because they anyway needed the trained officer to tackle the kashmir war so this is what we have under the military soldiers so under the military soldiers the soldiers were given the option to choose whichever country they wanted so pakistan has muslim has chosen pakistan and non-muslim has chosen india then pakistan received 150,000 ordinary soldier with 2500 trained officer but pakistan required pakistan required 4000 trained soldier or officer uh, for the kashmir war and as a result as as they did not receive that amount so uh, what pakistan did they have hired 500 trained officers from 20 percent reserve and who were hindus and appointed to higher post so this is what we have under the soldier now coming to this ordnance factory now what does ordnance factory means ordnance factory basically means that the factory where the military the war equipments are being produced that is the war that's where the that factory is known as ordnance factory and there were total 16 ordnance factories and the, these all were in india so these ordnance factories were made by the british and during the british period we had 16 ordnance factories and as we know that the headquarters like bombay madras and calcutta were in india so as a result these all 16 ordnance factories also came under the inheritance of india now as a uh, now what happened we can we can hand over the assets like we can hand over if it's a small thing to we can share we can hand over those right but a factory or a premises that's not possible to be handed over we cannot hand over a building to another country that's not possible so as a result what happened pa india refused to hand over any to pakistan because that's not possible though pakistan will be receiving 36 percent of ordnance factory 
out of 16 pakistan will be receiving 36 percent of the ordnance factory but it was not possible to hand over a building to a factory or a premise to another country that's not possible so india refused to hand over any and instead what india did india paid 60 million rupees instead of handing over the ordnance factory india paid 60 million rupees to pakistan with which pakistan has established their first ordnance factory at wa instead of handing hand, uh, handing over the ordnance factory india has paid 60 million rupees to pakistan with which pakistan has established their first ordnance factory at war now you can't hand over or you can't give the building the factory the premise to the uh, to the other person that's not possible but whatever things which we have inside the factory like guns other machines uh the cannon so these all are the th these all are the things the war supplies the war materials which we can hand over right so india has promised to supply this war supplies or the war materials to pakistan india did make a promise but what happened what was the problem the problem was that when they came they often came late they did not arrive on time they were often late or by the time they arrived or they reached pakistan they were mostly damaged so they either came late the supplies either either came late or by the time they reached the land of pakistan they were mostly damaged so this is what we have under the war supplies now a summary of this military assets division that is the assets were supposed to be divided in the ratio of 44 percent is to 36 percent between india and pakistan with 20 percent reserved then the soldiers they were given the option to choose whichever country they wanted so pakistan has chosen sorry muslim has chosen pakistan and non-muslim has chosen india then in pakistan received 150,000 ordinary soldiers with 2500 trained officers but however um Pakistan required 4,000 trained officers for the Kashmir War and as a result, Pakistan hired 500 trained officers from 20% result who were mostly, who were all Hindus. Now, coming to this ordnance factory, there were 16 ordnance factory and they all were set up in India. So, Pakistan was supposed to receive one ordnance factory but it's not possible to hand over. So, as a result, India refused to hand over the ordnance factory and instead paid 60 million rupees with which Pakistan has established their first ordnance factory at war. At war. But, it's okay you cannot but it's okay uh, that we cannot the india cannot hand over the ordnance factory but india could supply or could provide the war materials or war machines which were inside the factory so india did promise to supply them but what happened the time by the time when they came to in when they came to pakistan they were either late they were not uh, delivered on time or they were mostly damage so this is the problem that pakistan had to face in case of divisions of military assets not getting the enough number of trained workers not getting any ordnance factory then not having the not having the war supplies or the war materials which were required on time or the perfect condition so that's all for the military assets the last part of topic 5a which was supposed to be our day one challenge so that's the social problem so under social problems is just the societal problem that we anyway face in our regular life so this is a societal problem that pakistan faced in those times the first problem was that pakistan had five ethnic groups ethnic basically means different so pakistan had five different or ethnic groups Pakhtuns, Baloch, Sindhis, Punjabis and Bengalis so here we have this five different ethnic groups of Pakistan who had different language the language of these five ethnic groups or five groups of Pakistan were completely different outfit outlook culture tradition this all were completely different from one another like suppose if we are representing our country in front of the world either internationally or we are going on an international tour either study tour or for our, our artist conference or for olympiad whatever it could be mum so we mostly uh, like we try whenever we are representing we usually use our um 
Bengali music we represent through our Bengali national anthem. We try to wear our traditional costumes. It could be sari uh, or a salwar kameez for the ladies. So this is how basically we get to know that yeah we belong to the same country or we are Bengalis, and this is how we are representing our world. So, but in case of Pakistan, the language we are different. If we are speaking in Bengali, it means we are a Bangladeshi. So this is our common language. Though the different, uh, like though the different sixty four districts. Districts have their own dialects, have their own uh, language, own. Uh informal language to uh, which they use but once we come into the formal side we all speak in the formal bengali language so that's the common language should be but in case of pakistan the five different groups had five different languages outfit outlooks culture traditions so it was quite difficult to figure out that they all belong to one single country which is pakistan so that's the first problem that pakistan faced in a society then the next problem that pakistan faced was with the language because it's a major issue language is a major issue that we whenever we are uh, representing the country or we are trying to speak or communicate we basically speak in bengali that's how it happens if we are talking to our parents with our friends with our families with our close one we, we mostly speak in bengali because that's our mother language so over here in pakistan now we have to make a state language there should be a state language for pakistan but so how it should be it should be the majority percentage so over here 56 percent of pakistani they spoke in bengali but still the government has decided to make uh, urdu the state language so 56 percent of people they were speaking in bengali but still the government has decided to make urdu the language the state language which only was spoken by six person urdu was only spoken by 6% of Pakistani and Bengali 56% so eventually Bengali should be because it's more than 50% so eventually it should have become the uh, state language but the government they have decided to make Urdu the state language so there are some issues uh, some issues uh, took place or arrived because of this uh, confusion or because of the declaration of the government which will be covered in topic 5b so there is a separate part of this language movement in topic 5b but under social problem we just have to say what was the basic problem what was the social problem that's what we have to say over here then then what happened pakistan had to tackle a tackle a certain problem what sort of problem had to tackle the problem of landlessness poverty then certain diseases like cholera, malaria, and diarrhea. So these are the problems that Pakistan had to tackle because mostly in which part of Pakistan? Mostly in Bengal. Mostly in part of Bengal, which took place because of the famine. Bengal was the part which had suffered from famine two times. One was in 1769 to 70 and the other one was in 1943 which again took place during the British period. So these are the famines which took place in, the, in Bengal during the British period and Bengal as in the entire Bengal including East and West Bengal. So West East Bengal is a part of, Bang, is a part of East Pakistan now that's the present Bangladesh. So because of this famine the bengal started to suffer from under from a couple of problems landlessness poverty diseases like cholera malaria and diarrhea which pakistan had to tackle after the partition okay so that was a problem for pakistan and why was it a major problem for pakistan because see we had only 211 doctors to tackle the patient 2825 hospital beds 2825 hospital beds to tackle the problem of east pakistan so pakistan had only 211 doctors with 2825 hospital beds in east pakistan to tackle the problem of entire east pakistan health issue so that is a major problem for pakistan only having less number of doctor and with less number of hospital bed. The second problem was with education. We had only few. We had few schools, madrasas and colleges and only one university. One university which is University of Dhaka. So we had only one university of Dhaka and few colleges, schools and madrasas for the entire population of East Pakistan 
for which the education was lacking behind in East Pakistan and Pakistan government had also also needed to establish the universities, schools, colleges and all the other in educational institutions, the medical facilities over here in East Pakistan, especially in East Pakistan. So that was a social problem. So in a society, if you want to live in a society, if you want to have a healthy living style, we, we must need a proper medical facilities with medications we must need a proper educational institutions from where we can get the exact or the proper education so that's very important we should have a medium of language a proper medium of language suppose if i'm speaking in chitagonian language and if someone else is speaking in um like in others in other dialect for example sileti language or in noakhadi language so in that case what happens it becomes quite difficult to communicate so there should be one medium medium of language one state language through which we can easily communicate so as 56 percent was a spoken language so they could have pakistan government could have made this one as a state language or could have declared uh, that bengali to be the state language of east pakistan and urdu to be the state language for entire pakistan that could have been done but no the government did not do that so the language was an issue and if we as we are a country we must somehow look same like we all Bengalis, we have a same color of skin. We all are, we all are almost, a majority of us are almost fair brown. We have this fair brown color skin. So this is our, our like from this part, we can say that yeah, we all are Bengali or we all belong to this particular uh, region. Our height are more or less same. The height, only minority people have a different height, but majority of us have the same height. Apart from that, we all our all our all language is Bengali. Our traditional our costumes or outfit is sari for the ladies. So this is how basically it happens. So if you don't have this sort of things in a society, in that case, it becomes quite difficult for the government as well as for for each and every single person of the country to represent the country. So this is a social problem which we had in case of five different ethnic groups having different uh language outfit outlook costume traditions than 56 percent bengali and six percent urdu the spoken language but by government declaring urdu to be the state language of pakistan then pakistan had to tackle the problem of landlessness poverty diseases like cholera malaria and dairy especially in east pakistan especially when they're having a doctors with 211s and hospital bed with 2825 and finally the education institutions were also lacking behind in east pakistan which the government had to tackle first of all few schools madrasas and colleges only with one university which was university of dhaka so with that we are ending with topic 5a so that's the end of topic 5a and also um, the challenges the two-day challenges so if you're following this method in that case you can easily complete the two-day challenge methods but of course you have to go through the book once you are done with my notes then you can also go then please go through the book so in that case it will be giving you some extra information if you feel like to add them you can also add them or if you think like no it's it's okay just to go through them and to remember for your one line uh, questions that's also fine that's all for the day. Stay happy, stay safe. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.